Welcome to the Nano Networking and Molecular Communication module of the Colibri project. My name is Shukru Kuran from Boazic University. In this video, we will be covering the first part of the basic level of the module. We will be talking on the proposed candidate systems for the nano networking research in general. How they work, what are their strong aspects and problematic issues. In this part, our key question to be answered will be how we will be achieving applications based on the nano networking and molecular communication. So yes, how are we going to achieve these goals and realize these applications? In the recent years, newer, novel communication systems have been proposed and being developed in the telecommunication literature for these ends. Most prominent of these systems are communication via diffusion, terahertz signaling, calcium signaling, molecular motors, effort-based nanonetworking, and lastly, pheromone signaling. Being a new and pioneering field, currently the key words in nanonetworking research are not as concrete as they are in more aged topics. Although we will be using these aforementioned names for the systems, they might be called with different names in the literature. For example, CVD might be called diffusion-based molecular communication or just diffusion communication. While the first, third, fourth and sixth systems are MC-based, second and fifth systems are NEC-based. In this module, we will only be covering the first three systems mentioned in this list. And in this video, we will be specifically looking at the CVD system. Let us begin with defining a generic model for communication, to which many communication systems follow. By the way, make no mistake, this model is not the only model available for defining communication systems, just one of the most used ones. In this generic five-step model, the system is divided into five main steps. Encoding, transmission, channel, reception, and finally decoding. Encoding is the part where the actual message is translated and encoded onto a bit stream. Then in the second step, the transmission, the bit stream is transmitted via a physical property from the transmitter to the environment. Channel is the step in which the signal is actually propagated over the transmission medium. It can also be called propagation. Fourth comes the reception, which deals with how the signal is received at the destination and translated back into the received or estimated bit stream. Lastly, in the decoding step, the received bit stream is decoded and translated back to the received or estimated message. To give these items some specific notations, W represents the actual message, XT represents the bit stream, and ST represents the signal. At the receiving end, S bar T represents the received signal, YT represents the received bit stream, and finally W bar represents the decoded message. In the best case, we want the W bar to be equal to W which means that the receiver has received the message correctly. Note that the intermediary items are given with the index T, which means that these are streams over time. The first system that will be covered by this module, the communication by diffusion, is based on diffusion-based intercellular communication systems observed in living tissues. There are numerous examples of these systems all of which share the common element of using an intermediary molecule as to relay a message between a transmitter and the receiver. Also, in these systems, the medium that is used for the communication is governed by the diffusion dynamics, hence the name. To give an example of such diffusion-based intercellular systems, let's look at the neuromuscular junction, the NMJ. The NMJ is a small gap between an adjacent nerve and muscle cell couple in animal organisms. 
When a particular group of muscle cells are needed to be contracted, neurons use special molecules called acetylcholine, or ACH in short, to trigger the muscle cells. When looking from a communication engineering point of view, this is awfully similar to a communication system where there's a clear transmitter, communication medium, and a receiver. As you can see from the figure, an MJ is a semi-closed environment between a nerve and a muscle cell with a typical width of 10 to 100 nanometers. The communication is a one-directional, aka a simplex communication, which is always initiated from the nerve cell. The nerve cell starts the communication by producing ACH molecules and releasing them to the NMJ. The NMJ is a passive environment and allows the ACH molecules freely propagate or diffuse through itself. At the other end of the NMJ, there are ACH receptors called ACHR, which are special receptors who form chemical bonds with the ACH molecules when they are nearby. The formation of these chemical bonds enables the opening of the ion channels at the cell membrane, which in turn triggers the contraction of the muscle cell through the movement of ions. As the number of opened ion channels increase, the muscle becomes contracted, which means the message is transmitted. Due to the diffusion dynamics and the physical proximity of the two cells, the release ACH molecules arrive at the ACH receptors at the muscle cell membrane after a while later and form the necessary bonds. Though not all the ACH molecules are received by the receptors, normally these unreceived molecules stay in the NMJ and cause interference for the future signals. To eliminate these surplus ACH molecules, a third type of chemical construct called the ACH esterase molecules reside inside the junction. These secondary molecules interact and destroy the ACH molecules to their acetyl and choline parts, which cannot form a chemical reaction with the ACH receptors on their own. Again, looking from a communication point of view, these esterase molecules practically clean the channel for future signals. After giving a general look to one of the diffusion-based intercellular communication systems, let us define the communication via diffusion system. A basic communication via diffusion system is comprised of two devices, one transmitter and one receiver, both of which reside in the same diffusive environment. The transmitter device encodes the information or the message upon special molecules, which are called the messenger molecules, and release them to the diffusive environment. These messenger molecules, or MMs for short, move through the environment following the diffusion dynamics in a probabilistic fashion. Some of them arrive to the receiver and trigger the reception and decoding process of the initial message at the receiving end of the communication. Let us formalize the system a little bit based on the five-step communication model we described earlier. In the CVD system, the message is encoded upon the messenger molecules inside the transmitter device and is translated into a bit stream. At each time step, based on the current bit value of the message, the transmitter device releases a certain number of messenger molecules to the environment which constitutes the transmission step. Afterwards, as the propagation step, these molecules move through the environment following the diffusion dynamics. Some of these molecules arrive at the receiver device and the reception step is handled by the formation of chemical bonds between the messenger molecules and the corresponding receptors at the cell membrane of the receiver. At this step, the message is translated back into a bit stream based on some physical property of the received molecules. Finally, the receiver device decodes the information from the received bit stream. One of the key issues of the CVD system 
is how the received molecules are translated into a bit stream at the receiver end. Now, the critical property of the diffusion dynamics is the lack of any directionality for the messenger molecules. The messenger molecules can move in any direction and are not guaranteed to reach at the receiver at all. However, as we will see in the upcoming videos, we can calculate the expected number of messenger molecules and the time distribution of their arrival at the receiver. So in the CVD system, we divide the time in equally sized time slots in which one symbol of data it is transmitted as in classical communication systems. Considering a basic case in which a symbol represents one bit of information, the receiver can translate the received signal by using a simple thresholding mechanism. If the number of messenger molecules received in a single time slot exceeds a certain threshold, the receiver translates the signal as the bit value of 1. Whereas, if they do not exceed the same threshold, then the receiver translates the signal as the bit value of 0. To wrap up, we can roughly itemize the features of the CVD system as follows. On the good side, it's a biocompatible system. Compared to other conventional wired and wireless systems, it is much more energy efficient and it has inherent broadcasting and multicasting capabilities. The energy efficiency comes from the fact that the messenger molecules can be harvested from the environment and can be used again and again many times. Also, the diffusion property of the medium allows broadcast and multicast systems to be implemented without much change to the propagation step. On the other hand though, there is too much path loss in the environment, again due to the diffusion dynamics. This results in low data rates and high transmission delay values compared to conventional wire systems. Of course, in our applications, we are not considering sending full HD movies between nanomachines. Therefore, our data rate requirements are much less than contemporary consumer electronic devices. But then again, based on the application, we might be needing several kilobits of information to be sent in one second. And according to the current CVD research, more complex mechanisms are necessary to achieve these bitrate values. So, we have given an overview of the communication via diffusion system in the nano networking and molecular communications research in this video. We will be continuing with the calcium signaling system in the second video of the basic level. Here you can see the references of this video. Thank you for listening and see you next time.